Hello everyone. I am Nivita Jana from Ambika Prasad Research Foundation. Welcome to all of you to our channel Biodiversity and Conservation. Today we are going to learn about the population density. So let's start. So what is population density? Krebs in 1978 maintains that size or density of a population is its basic characteristic which evokes much interest. The effect that a population exerts on the community and the ecosystem depends not only on what kinds of organisms are involved but also how many in other words population density. So population density is defined as population size in relation to some unit of space for example, population size divided by total land area, it is generally assessed and expressed as the number of individuals or population by mass per unit area or volume. 4 million diatoms or, or cubic meter of water or 200 pounds of fish per acre of water surface. A wide ranging variety of attributes can serve as biomass units ranging from dry weight to DNA and RNA content. And this becomes true for a population also. The four population parameters that affect the density are natality, mortality, emigration and immigration. So population density may also change with reason, seasons, weather conditions and food supply and with many other influences. In an area, there is an upper limit to the population density which is imposed by the size of the area and the trophic structure. The population density gives us information about the magnitude of the population but does not provide any information about the distribution pattern of the population within an environment. Then coming to the create an ecological density, since the patterns of dispersion of organisms in nature are different, it becomes important to distinguish between the following like create density, it is the density um, per unit total space and ecological density, it is the density per unit of habitat space that is available area or volume that can actually be colonized by the population. The distinction becomes important due to the fact that organisms in nature grow generally clumped in groups and rarely are uniformly distributed. A good example is provided by Kull's study of fish density.
its measurement of population density. Lancia et al. in 1994 classified population density measurement methods in three major categories. Uh, one is population estimate where all animals can be seen. This includes complete census or counts. So total counts are a complete enumeration of individuals within a sampling unit. Such counts are only possible sometimes with large or conspicuous organisms, for example, bison and open plains or wells in an area of the sea, or with organisms that aggregate into large breeding colonies. The method is, however, not practicable in most cases and other methods are employed. Then the second one is population estimate where not all animals can be seen. This involves mark recapture method. In this method, a sample of the population is captured, marked and released and the proportion of marked individuals in a later sample used to determine the total population. A commonly used mark recapture method is the Lincoln index in which an equation is used to obtain the population estimate, which is population estimate is divided by the number of animals captured and marked in sample S at time t is equal to number of animals captured in sample S2 at time t2 is divided by number of marked animals found in sample S2 at time t2. So, since three of the parameters of the equation will be known, while going through the process of marking, releasing and recapturing. The fourth parameter and the population estimate can then be calculated. This method works on certain presumptions such as that the marking technique has no negative effect on the mortality of marked individuals, that the technique does not affect the probability of uh, getting recaptured, that there is no significant immigration, emigration natality or mortality between the two events of capturing the individuals. Marking recapture method is most reliable when uh, the turnover is low. The method does not work well when densities are undergoing rapid change. And removal sampling. In removal sampling, the number of organisms removed from an area is in successive samples is plotted on the y-axis of a graph, whereas the total number previously removed is plotted on the x-axis. If the probability of capture remains reasonably constant, uh, the points will fall on a straight line that can be extended to the point on the x-axis that would uh, indicate the theoretical 100% removal from the area. And uh, plotless methods, this method is based on a series of random points. The distance uh, to the nearest uh, individual is measured in each of four quarters at each point along this series of random points. The density per unit area can be estimated from the mean distance. And the third one is population index. Uh, so quite often due to financial, logistical or time constraints, it may not be possible to carry out a total count or it may simply be more important to know whether a population is changing than to know its size at any one moment. In such cases, a large number of indirect methods often referred to as population or abundance indices or activity indices have been found to be more useful. These methods do not rely on directly uh, seeing or hearing the animals but merely noting uh, some form of sign that tells us that the animals have been in the area. Just for example, the number of set antlers, the number of flicker pellets and droppings, paint records, amount of food consumed, the frequency of prey remains in the stomach, contents of predators, vocalization frequency, open or Closed burrow opening counts, the frequency and pattern of tracks and trails, and runway accounts. These indices um, are based on the concept that a fixed amount of searching effort 
will locate a fixed proportion of the population. Furthermore, it is assumed that the index is proportional to the density and that the rate of proportionality is constant. If the index doubles, we assume that the population has doubled. Natality of population. Um, it is simple or broader term covering the production of new individuals of any organism in a population. Natality is the population increase factor. It can be defined in a general sense as the force of total population reproduction. The new individuals are hatched, germinated, arise by division, etc. In human population, natality rate is better known as the birth rate. So two types of natality are generally recognized. One is maximum natality, it is, uh, which is the theoretical maximum production of new individuals under ideal conditions. That is when no factors are exerting a limiting effect, it is a constant for a given population. And another one is ecological or realized natality, which is the observed population birth rate. It refers to population increase under an actual existing specific condition. This is the amount of reproduction that actually occurs over a defined time interval. It is not a constant for a population but may vary with the size and composition of the population and the physical and environmental conditions. So natality is generally expressed as the rate determined by dividing the number of new individuals produced by time or as the number of new individuals per unit of time per unit of population. Then coming to the mortality of population, it refers to death of individuals in the population. This rate is equivalent to death rate in human demography. So two categories are recognized. One is ecological or realized mortality. It is the loss of individuals under a given environmental condition. It is not a constant but varies with population and environmental conditions. And the another and another one is specific or potential mortality. This is the theoretical uh, minimum mortality or constant for a population which represents the loss under idle or non-limiting conditions. That is, even under the best conditions individuals who die of old age determined by their physiological longevity, which of course is often far greater than the average ecological longevity. So generally specific mortality is expressed as a percentage of the initial population dying within a given time or as a percent of average population. Often it is the survival rate that is of greater interest than the death rate. 